We realized that architects had not spent time examining and exploring the problem of mass incarceration in our criminal justice system in this country. How could we have this conversation and not be talking about the physical structures in which we hold people or house people or treat people? Alex Bosansky from Impact Justice, Susan Bird from New Way of Life, came to Frank and started talking about incarceration and how to make change in the United States. And Frank Geary has brought his heart and his imagination and his own humanity into a really complicated, difficult space. So I suggested that we could do it at the architecture schools. I wasn't sure what we were going to get out of it. It wasn't the concert hall, but it was something that really pushed the boundaries of what a school project usually is. The moral issues and the social issues and the aesthetic implications of something like a prison. Frank's proposed project was about real life sustainability in the broadest sense. It was about urban conditions that architects could help address. It was about working with other schools on campus and bringing in their expertise and expanding the exposure of what architecture students do to connect them with the broader world. How does telling a story about the future, how does that help change the world we live in today and set us off in a trajectory that's different? I think it takes a dramatic reorientation of what we think prison is and prison should be, um, both by those who run them, those who work in them, and those who are sent there. Okay, is that ready? We're going to get started. Welcome, everybody. Frank Geary, world-renowned architect, designer, here just to learn from everybody their experience with incarceration, after incarceration, whatever comes up. Susan Burton, an amazing woman, and she is an example of when systems are broken and don't support you, and that you end up in the criminal justice system, right? When she was in, she began to organize, and when she got out, she realized nothing that had been happening on the inside was preparing her for when she got out. And she realized that she had to be the answer and provide the solutions for her sisters and for others who were going to be coming out of the system. I have had first-hand experience of what it feels like to be in there, what it does to a person's spirit and psyche. And that needed to be a part of what was thought about in this project. When you really meet someone who has been through the whole process, who has been incarcerated in numerous facilities and has seen different types of spaces, and it can really tell you it's this that doesn't work. The cramped room or like the lighting, the, the window was placed here. I had no natural light for 10 years. Like very, very like concrete physical elements. But then those, in the cells, there's eight women in there and it's four bunks like it is and they're very closed in. You cannot get out to bed at the same time. You cannot stand next to each other. You. The, and when you're climbing into your upper bunk, you can actually use the other, because it's not even a full foot apart. A little mattress like this then, you know, that you get to sleep in, and a little blanket. It's horrible. Four bunk beds. They doubled that to eight bunk beds. And the air supply to me got thinner. They gave us more people, they didn't give us more air. And uh, a little window. Couldn't open it. The lights are on all day, no matter what time. It's freezing cold in here. In the summertime, it was always, the heat was stifling. We were allowed a fan, but one little fan did not work in a room full of eight women with the doors locked. During our project, we had the opportunity to go to Norway and Finland to see what is radically different than anything we have in this country. It's a very popular uh, to train to be a chef. This is a real sound studio. Oh, man. You'll have job training, visits with your family, academic opportunity throughout your entire stay. You need to train the inmate in how to become this good neighbor. And why do we do that? It's not about, you know, being soft on crime. This is about being soft uh, on the societies. This is uh, in the taxpayers' interest that these guys coming from prison actually becoming good neighbors. Here, facilities, 
frequently set in remote places, disconnected from any community, lack the basic resources to be able to get an education, to learn a job skill, to be in a place where your family could conceivably visit you. Um, so I didn't get to see my children for the first seven, eight years. You know, visiting is one of many hugely important issues uh, that we, we cannot claim ignorance of uh, as a reason that we do it so poorly. It's, it's, it makes no sense and it's heartbreaking. So I reduced the number of inmates and increased the number of visitor spaces. A couple of them had built prisons that had pretty robust units and facilities and spaces for family members, right? And that's one of the things that that you just forget that you need, but also you forget that the actual structure of prison discourages. I think here the client is the people who have to live in this facility. Right. And when the client is the state, the question is always about security. But when the client is the people who live there, the question is about what, what about this environment um, is meeting their needs. What the architect can do here is show a future or uh, propose something that the country can then aspire to. I think this is the position that the studio is having propose an alternative reality based on things we've seen in other countries and what we think is a space that can, you know, be conducive to helping people. When people would come and see the models and the drawings that the students would create, frequently their first reaction was, there's no way this will ever happen. And by the end of it, more often than not, people would say, well, maybe. Or we could, but we'd have to do a few other things first before we get there. Because there, there will come a point where once the prison population is decreased to a more sustainable level, then the, the institutions and the people will start asking different questions. This project is just a, a really amazing opportunity to think about different kinds of language and languages of justice. These kind of studios open a door that maybe we should we should take advantage of it, <laughs> jump in.